Welcome ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to solve for all of the solutions um, given the equation 2 sine squared of x equals sine of x. So we see in this, equa in this case that we have a sine of x on both sides. And whenever we want to solve, you know, we want to isolate our variable x. So let's get them onto the same side. So to do that, I'm simply just going to subtract of sine of x on both sides. Therefore, I obtain sine squared of x minus sine of x equals 0. All right. So now. Looking at this, um, what we, what we want to kind of go from is we see that the, we have this sine squared of x, right? And that's kind of very similar to what we did with kind of quadratics. I can't combine the sine squared and the sine to get this down to 1x. So I need to look at what are some other ways that I, that I can solve when I have um, two x's that I can't combine. And that kind of brings me back to solving quadratic functions or equations when we had to apply factoring. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry factoring and the zero product property. So what I'm going to want to do is see if I can apply any type of factoring or the zero product to apply the zero product property. And I notice that since I can't combine them, but I can factor out a sign, they do share a sine of x. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor out a sine of x times 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so again, by factoring out a sine of x, which you can check your answer by multiplying that sine of x back through, um, you can see that now I have produced a product of factors. And that product of factors is equal to zero. So therefore, now I can apply the zero product property, which states if you have the product of factors equal to zero, then one of them has to equal zero. So we set them both equal to zero. And now I have two linear or not linear equations, but two equations with, a, with, one, with the variable that I can now solve for x. So to solve for x, we need to obviously know our unit circle. All right, And I'm not going to go ahead and fill out everything for on the unit circle, but we're just going to kind of go through some of the important steps and points of on our unit circle. So when is sine of x equal to 0? Well, sine of x is equal to 0. Obviously, remember sine is on your y-axis, it's only going to equal to 0 at these two points. Well, since we're looking at all of the solutions, um, we know it's going to be at 0, and at pi, then at 2 pi, and at 3 pi. So I can say x is equal to pi n, where n equals 0 is going to give us the point at, is going to give us the angle at 0. When n equals 1, it's going to equal pi. Then for our next solution, we need to do a little work. So I'm going to add 1 on both sides. Do sine of x equals 1, divide by 2, divide by 2. Sine of x equals 1 half. Now I need to determine when does sine of x equal 1 half. So again, I need to look at my unit circle and say, you know, when, where on the unit circle is sine of x equal to 1 half? Well, there's three coordinate points that we have. And this coordinate point, first one is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Where that's the x coordinate, that's your y coordinate. So the first angle that I have in that first quadrant, which is the angle pi over 6, is going to be my angle. Then, however, we also have to look at the reflection, which would be this angle over here, which is now negative square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half, because they both have a y coordinate of 1 half. If I do any other reflections in the third and the fourth quadrant, it's going to be a negative 1 half, so it's not going to be a part of our solutions. And remember, trying to determine all of the solutions. So therefore, I have my first angle, oh, I didn't bring any colors, which is pi over um, 1 half. Then I'm going to have to add 2 pi to do this again and add 2 pi. So therefore, my two solutions are x equals um, pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, and x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Again, we're trying to determine all of the solutions in this case. So we can just add, because whenever I get my angle, I can just keep on adding 2 pi, which is like adding your coterminal angles. You're adding, you're just continually adding that same type of angle um, and on for them. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve for your solutions of a trigonometric equation like this. Thanks.